This class is really about analog electronics. So I figured we'd show you an audio amplifier. This is an audio amplifier from the early 1980s. It's an Electron Kinetics Eagle II amplifier. And the cool thing about this is that back in the day, they used a lot of discrete parts so you could actually look inside one of these amplifiers and determine how it worked. Like you could fix them, which you can't do with a lot of modern stuff. As you can see there are a lot of parts in there. And so a quick tour of this amplifier. Usually we start where the power goes in when we're looking at electronics. And we see we have a power cord down there. So it's a removable cord, like a computer cord. And it's nice enough to tell us what the input voltage is. 120 volts, 60 hertz, meaning that it's a, you know, it runs on 120 volts AC, like we have in the United States. And it can take 800 watts inside, so into the amplifier. Then we have the signal inputs on the top up here. And then the output's over here. So small signals come in, like say, you know, line level, like almost like out of a phone or something like that, voltages and currents. And then a much, much larger output comes out of there, and you can kind of tell by the, the difference in the size of the connectors on there. So some other features of this. If we could follow the power cord into the amplifier, which we kind of can, because they're nice enough to make it easy to service. Power cord comes in here, all the wire goes to the front panel, to the switch. There, then it goes back over here to a, a fuse for safety. And then it goes to this giant thing right here, which is called the power transformer. That changes the 120 volts down to a lower voltage, and it enables it to go plus and minus, or positive and negative, relative to ground. And you need that for audio amplifiers to drive speakers. And the AC from that transformer gets rectified by this little black box down there, it's hard to see, into DC. And then these two giant capacitors right here smooth out the DC. And it doesn't have a ripple on it, it kind of makes it a constant DC. So those are huge. I have a new one right here because those are old enough now that it's time to replace them. And you can just see, I mean, this is a capacitor, you know, compared to the small ones in our kit. So you can tell that can, can store a ton of energy. There's one for the positive and the negative power supplies. And then it's disassembled now. A lot of these wires went over there. So if we move back over to this printed circuit board right here, that's what this green thing is. It's a fiberglass board, and it has copper traces on it, or copper wires that are etched into it. And the shiny part right here is copper. So the duller part is just blank insulator, and then you can see these little traces over there. Those are where signals and voltages and things are going. So the input to the amplifier is right around here somewhere and uh, right up right underneath this capacitor. Then there's an op amp right there. You'll use op amps in your lab kits or later on in the semester. So we have a small signal comes in gets amplified by an op amp and it goes through a bunch of other circuitry. There's some transistors in here which you'll learn about in later classes that boost up the currents and the voltages so these little ones right over here. And then the real business end are these black boxes, the 2SC blah, and then the 2SA boxes. And this one even has a thermometer on it over there. And those are what drive the loudspeaker. Those you know provide the power to drive the loudspeakers. And then through the circuit board, those work their way back over to these connectors here. So the uh, you know nothing is ever 100% efficient and you know, we know that if current goes through a resistor, it's going to heat up and there's going to be a voltage drop, etc., etc. And we can see there are a few resistors in here. It's kind of around the board. So we know there's no way for this to be 100% efficient. Like every watt that comes in that power cord isn't going to go out and drive the speaker. And the other clue that we're not 100% efficient is this big piece of metal that these are sitting on is a heat sink. See these big heat sinks right there? It kind of looks like a radiator. Like they're gigantic compared to my hand. So, you know, that means that, you know, we're not 100% efficient. And your job is to figure out approximately how much energy we're losing. In order to figure out what the efficiency of this device is, in other words, what the power output to the speakers is versus the power input, I suggest going to the internet and finding out some of the specifications on it. So if you use those in combination 
with the input ratings down here, you could figure out some things like how much current's going in, how much power is going in, and then figure out the amount of power that's being lost to heat in the heat sinks.